If you were to ask someone what the biggest animal in the Cambrian period was, the most common answer you'd get would likely be Anomalocaris. Actually, that's a lie. The most common answer you'd get would probably be more along the lines of What are you talking about? The Cambrian period is the earliest period in the Paleozoic era, and began approximately 540 million years ago. It has long been known to have hosted some of the strangest animals the world has ever seen. Creatures from a bygone age that have baffled and befuddled the brains of the brightest academics for decades. Anomalocaris, a member of a bizarre group of animals called the Radiodonts, has been widely hailed as the undisputed Titan of the Cambrian. At a little over half a metre long, it's fairly modest by standards of today's fauna. But at a time when most animals alive would have been dwarfed by your pinky, Anomalocaris was something of a behemoth. But the fossil record is a ceaseless treasure trove of discoveries, and in 1994, fragmentary fossils were found that provided tantalising hints, suggesting that there was something much bigger lurking in the waters of the Cambrian. The Maoshenshen shales, situated in the Yan'an province of China, preserve in exquisite detail a rich fossil assemblage of Cambrian orgasms collectively referred to as the Shenjiang biota, after the county in which the shales are located. It, along with Canada's Burgess Shale, is regarded as one of the most important fossil sites on the planet when it comes to providing insight into the mysterious world of the Cambrian due to the sheer variety of species present, and their exceptional state of preservation. Among the many fossils unearthed in the shales was a strange disembodied mouth, consisting of numerous rows of teeth encircled by a ring of spiny plates. The publication covering the original specimen proposed that this mysterious mouth belonged to an anomalocaridid. Comparisons were made between this mouth and that of Peitoya, a smaller, stockier relative of Anomalocaris found in the Burgess Shale. But what really set it apart was its size. Scaling it to the proportions of Anomalocaridids known from more complete remains, suggested that these mouthparts would have belonged to an animal approximately two metres long, dimensions hitherto unheard of, even for these giants among Cambrian fauna. However, the mystery of the Maoshenshen mouth was far from over with subsequent studies of additional remains finding notable discrepancies between the morphology of these mouthparts and those of any Anomalocaridid. Awesome as the idea of a two metre long Anomalocaris undoubtedly is, it was becoming increasingly evident that we were dealing with something else. But what then was it? The possibility of the mouth belonging to an Anomalocaridid or any other radiodont was discarded, based off key differences in their structure, notably the arrangement of the sclerites, hard plates of exoskeleton that are major components of the mouthparts of both these animals. Radiodonts, like Anomalocaris, possess what is known as an oral comb, a ring of sclerites surrounding the mouth. This structure, however, had a more complex appearance consisting not of a single circle, but, as aforementioned, multiple radial rows of sclerites surrounded by a circle of larger plates. With sufficient evidence that these fossils did indeed represent something distinct, the disembodied mouth was finally given a name. Omnidens amplus. With the genus name Omnidens meaning all tooth, and the species name amplus meaning large. And large it was, for while a two-metre anomalocaridid was off the table, it was clear that the owner of these mouthparts, whatever it was, was enormous for a Cambrian animal. The study that ruled out the previous possibility proposed that Omnidens was, instead, a giant priapulid. Priapulids are marine worms that still exist today, inhabiting shallow coastal waters including the intertidal zone wherein they spend much of their lives buried beneath the sediment. They are an extremely ancient group, and fossils of very similar animals have been found dating back to the very beginning of the Cambrian. 
One of the more commonly uncovered and well-known species from the Burgess Shale assemblage is Otoya, a rather wickedly armed predator that has been found with the remains of its unfortunate victims still preserved inside it. So it's clear that the Priapulids, or at the very least close relatives, were abundant in the Cambrian. And Omnidens being one of these real-life Mongolian deathworms did seem like a plausible option. But there is yet another plot twist to come. The first study may have been off the mark by suggesting Omnidens was a radiodont, but the initial proposition has in fact turned out to be closer to our current understanding of the animal's taxonomy than the idea that it was a priapulid. The catalyst of this next major upheaval in our perception of Omnidens was another Cambrian animal called Pandalurion whittingtoni. This intriguing creature was a member of an informal group of animals called the Lobopodians. Exactly which animals fall under this category is subject to a little wiggle room, but in the simplest sense the Lobopodians comprise a variety of invertebrates that are closely related to arthropods but not true arthropods themselves, one of the more well-known examples of which being Hallucigenia. However, the term has been used more broadly to include certain living groups as well, notably the Onycophorans or velvet worms. Lobopodians differ from arthropods in the sense that their limbs are soft and non-segmented. These limbs are called lobopods, from which of course the grouping's name is derived. Out of all these bizarre animals, Pandalurion, a roughly half metre long gilled lobopodian from Greenland, was particularly relevant to the story of Omnidens, due to striking parallels between its mouth apparatus and those of the mysterious Chengjiang Titan. In fact, their mouth structures are so uncannily alike that it has even been proposed that Pandalurion and Omnidens are one and the same, though this is not universally accepted. But it doesn't end there, for unlike Omnidens, which is only known from its mouth parts, Fossils of Pandalurion have been found in which the animal was preserved in its entirety, providing valuable insight towards the monster behind the mouth. So now it seems we have a much more robust idea of what kind of animal Omnidens was, and that in turn brings us closer than ever before to envisioning this behemoth of the Cambrian. Scaling it to the proportions of Pandalurion indicate that Omnidens could have reached or exceeded lengths of around one and a half metres, making it very likely to be not just the largest Cambrian animal, but the largest animal the world had seen so far. Of course, there's no guarantee that Omnidens would have had the exact same body proportions as Pandalurion, in spite of the very close relationship evident between the two genera. While my reconstruction here took the approach of giving it a similar overall shape to Pandalurion, other reconstructions show Omnidens with a more elongated, centipede-like appearance, possibly basing it off other Lobopodians, like Jianshanopodia or Megadictyon, both of which have also been found in Chengjiang fossil sites. Having a more concrete idea of what kind of animal Omnidens was and what its closest relatives were, allows us to infer more about the genus than merely its physical appearance. For instance, how did it live? Once again, fossils of Pandalurion and other Lobopodians provide tantalising hints that bring us ever closer to answering these questions. Some fossils of Cambrian Lobopodians are so well preserved that even their digestive systems and gut contents are discernible providing clues about their diets. Large Lobopodians, including Pamdalurion, Janshanopodia, and Megadictyon, show clear evidence of well-developed digestive glands, and possible fragmentary arthropod remains have been found within the gut of Pamdalurion. Furthermore, many of these creatures possessed large frontal appendages adorned with fearsome spines, and like Omnidens itself, a truly nightmarish mouth. All of the above, combined with their size relative to other Cambrian fauna, give ample reason to suspect these animals were predatory. Now scale one of these already sizeable lobopodians to the truly gargantuan dimensions of Omnidens, 
and you have a creature that even a normal Akaris may have done well to be wary of. While our knowledge of this awe-inspiring animal has come a long way since the first time its enigmatic mouthparts were revealed to the world, there remains so much to be learned. Perhaps somewhere in the Changjiang, an exquisitely preserved, full-bodied specimen of Omnidens lies just a lucky pickaxe stroke away. Such is the allure of our bygone past. So much mystery, so much that we may never know, yet at the same time, so much that we can and do know. And that, I think, is incredible. For every rock is a history book, every fossil a tale of a long lost life. And with each new page we turn, our picture of the ancient earth becomes ever more intricate, detailed, and alive. If the weird world of the Cambrian intrigues you, then feel free to check out this old video about a large and very strange radiodont called Titanochorus. And of course, if you enjoy my content, then feel free to subscribe. And if you don't enjoy my content, then you are warmly invited to leave an incoherent comment for me to read out in my next compilation. So, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you again very soon.